Hello, everyone. Welcome to the recording of a discussion that happened after YouTube premiere of a performance explosion. You are going to hear a moderator and fellow choreography student, Hannah Schillinger, and me, a choreographer of the piece, Alitza Minar. For the performance group, you will hear Lauri Lohi, furthermore, composer Matos Hale, and stage and costume designer Claudia Galli, who participated as well. Thanks to the rich and engaged audience who came to discuss with us, you will hear also their questions and comments on the piece. This discussion happened on Zoom, but we decided to keep it in the form of a podcast for further replays. To see the full performance, see the link below in the description or click on the link in this video. Although this is made for an audio experience, here are some pictures of the show who are made by Alicia Hopper. I will give my word to Hannah now. Thanks for coming and enjoy our talk from 30th of November 2020. Well, this is, of course, a premiere that happens in the middle of uh, the second lockdown light um, during the corona pandemic here in Berlin. So, of course, the first question I would like to um, ask you is like, how was it to create and to have a premiere during the pandemic? Okay. Um, it was pretty difficult. There were many challenges that I had to face, especially because of the second lockdown that came like two weeks before the premiere. Uh, and I wasn't, sh I wasn't sure if we are going to perform. So it was really great that we could do it for the intern people of my school at least, which was actually 60 people. So that was a big success. Um, and then, I mean, we, start in, we started in August. I mean, it was, we were supposed to start in February, but we started in August uh, instead. And that was very joyful because it was summer and we could rehearse fully in, in, on the residency in Prague which was uh, really cool. I mean, it was a great experience and great start for the whole team to like group up and to uh, make a good entrance. And then we were somehow I knew, or I was trusting that we will be able to do it in any kind of condition. And then, I mean, of course I was facing like bureaucratic of like how the distancing of the dancers and uh, yeah, distancing, not distancing like this, like that. And the rules were changing all the time. So it was every day like, okay, so now new again and new again and new again. So yeah, I think I would answer like this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could go about it for five minutes, but I think that's not so. <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> no, I mean, just the fact, I guess you had to like, change a lot throughout and always like adapt to new situations um so the, i guess this is a quite big challenge now like because you never know like when the piece then has its performances you never know what the situation at this point will be and how you can realize it um maybe to dive into the content of the piece um you chose the theme of anger for um Wait, your... somebody having a microphone on i think it's aulin no, i mute it Oop. okay should be fine let's continue okay so I was just saying that um, let's dive right into the, the content of the piece a little bit more. And you um, decided to work on the theme of anger. So I would be curious to know, like, how did you approach this theme and develop your ideas around this? Um, <laughs> anger. <laughs> this is so far now. Um, I think it started with me wanting to explore something which has a big amount of energy because I was planning to perform it in Ufer Studio 14, which is big, and I wanted to challenge myself and make something which is made for this space and then it's like, like explore, exploding through the borders of the space. So this is how I started to get to this um, to the questioning of what kind of topic it could be and because i like to deal with topics which are not easy or like are somehow 
I wouldn't say positive or like, yeah, or like a bit dark. That's, that's why I think I, I ended up with anger in the end. I started actually with festivity as a topic, but uh, I, I ended up with anger somehow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's clearly shown, like the piece has a lot of energy and I was fascinated now seeing the video because it actually like the intensity that I was experiencing in the room is of course even bigger than in the video, but you can, with the camera zooming in on details, really see the high intensity of um, the whole piece. And that would be a question maybe to, for the, for the performers. I don't really know if um, you're all here because I cannot see you, but maybe one of the performers, Lauri, Evgenia, or, um, Caroline, I think Caroline is not here. Okay, but maybe you feel like saying something about that. How was it to work with this high intensity and how was it for you to work around this theme of anger? Guys, are you here? Lauri is here. Yeah, wow. I'm here. I don't know if anyone else is here. But yeah, hi. Um, this inner, yeah, this, this intensity of the, of the piece um I mean I think it was it was it was interesting to work especially with a theme like this uh and I think that at least I experienced anger as quite a like an like a consum consumptive energy and an energy that con consumes a lot um so and that made the intensity I think like tiring in one sense um whereas like if it would have been a different theme it wouldn't have necessarily like uh felt the same way so it was interesting with this like combination of the of the emotion um also um yeah the the most of the energy in the piece i think comes from us as performers as it's a huge space uh and and like music and audio that we had came in in a very very late phase uh so it was interesting to work with like generating all of that energy and the intensity and like how to fill the room how to fill the room just by us i think that was the most challenging part because i was resisting to explode or like to let them explode for quite some time and i think it happened only like one month before the premiere that uh, i felt like oh this is the like this is the material this is the explosion and for me it's all this and all this vomiting and <laughs> super expressive um, moment of the piece yeah yeah um since we're now already talking about the um the feeling of anger also in the body i would also really be curious to hear from you lauri um how would how do you feel or how do you sense as a performer manifesting this emotion in the body how, what does it do to you physically when you go into this state when you bring yourself there yeah it's it's interesting because i feel like we were we were exploring sort of two different parts of that sort of the the um, and it feels very different, I think, in, in the in the both different versions of like when you just gather the energy and let it let it grow, but not let it um, let it come out. So you sort of like bottle it up, uh, and then versus the one where you actually just kind of like let it go. And then it can be, it, uh, yeah, it feels very liberating, like freeing as any kind of release of intense emotions. It can make you like. Um, yeah, yeah, it feels it feels like a release. You feel really very light after, but then the bottling up um, phase, I feel, yeah, there I I felt this like the, the it it sort of consumes somehow from the inside because it's it's like a such a it's a very eruptive mm -hmm. feeling that wants to be let out. Yeah, and I would adapt to that that we. I think we were having a little bit of problem with like the humorous parts or like having a lot of fun in the rehearsal so that somehow we were losing the tension. So we were able to build up tension and then, then we were like breaking it all the time with some funny moments that 
that appeared. So this is also my question of how to balance out the intensity, how to build the tension and how to break it sometimes so that there is this um, space to let, let something out, but also, yeah, build up again and again. So it was uh, challenging in this on, off, bottle up, explode, go, break, pause, in all, in all these tools, how to mix yeah. that together. Yeah. But I really need to say that this is something, or when I saw it, this was something very, very like well done. The, and what I noticed that I found really, really strong in this piece is the rhythm you create with, this, with it. Because I could really also, as a viewer, sense that there was a buildup and then like the rhythm was changing a lot throughout the piece and this buildup and then breaking down again. And then in also interaction with the objects, like, I think this was um, really also getting through to us when when we when we saw it. Um, I just saw that we have the first question also in the chat from Ursu. Um, I don't know how to say it. Maybe I'm saying it wrong, and I'm sorry for that. But do you feel like um, just unmuting yourself and repeating the question so that Alitza can answer it? Yeah. Hello. Um, Hi. You said it correctly, no worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I was just wondering how many weeks you were rehearsing and how many hours per day. And if this, because you said that this topic of the anger, it was quite energy consuming and tiring, if this was also changing your rehearsal schedule. Um. So I think we rehearsed like eight to ten weeks, uh, probably ten, probably ten, <laughs> ten like four or five hours a day. But then, and uh, since we, I mean, we we started in August, and then we also had some breaks, so it was not full in all the time. So and the breaks were super important for me to have, so that there is some digesting from our, all all of our sides. Uh, and intense. I mean, I think we had once a rehearsal of eight hours where we found the material of the exploding. And afterwards, I think Caroline's neck was blocked and <laughs> Evgenia had pain in her heel. So then we realized that we actually cannot rehearse for eight hours this intensively. Like that it's better to have short, shorter uh, rehearsals than longer. But it was also like this kind of time pressured that we just had to rehearse this day eight hours and then i wanted to go in this day for that specific thing so it's also about how you distribute the powers which I, we didn't do that day well so but it was good to find the border at least <laughs> you were already saying before that you chose humor or the funny parts also as a counterpoint to balance this strong intensity and the anger and this very strong emotion. Was this um, choice there from beginning on? Did it come in throughout the process because you realized later that you need this counterpoint? Like how did this, this counterpoint develop as being, being a part of the piece? Yeah. Um... So I think humor is something which I like to work with generally in my work because I think it gives you overview on the topic, even if it's like super serious or sad or whatever else, then I just like to break it and be able to laugh about anything in the life. I mean, I generally laugh a lot also in, a, in, in inappropriate moments. So, so it's it's something which I think is just part of me and I really like to have it also on stage. Uh, and then it also like probably creates a certain kind of border of not being pathetic. That's I think that's my like uh, way to go around it or like yeah, a certain kind of protection also I think humor. And because of the how how the material was developing and how we finally found the explosion and then like 
it was getting so serious that suddenly the humor was ne not there or like before that we had a problem that there was too much humor then there was not enough you know <laughs> so it was really like thin ice of uh, that I, that we slide on um because the balance was so hard to find in this in this moment and then that's why like two three weeks before the premiere the horse character appeared and it was uh, done by Xenia who was really it was really cool that she could join in so last moment she was supposed to be part of the show from the beginning so she came to the rehearsal sometimes and we but she couldn't be in, in, in Prague in August so it somehow stopped us there and then I tried to put her in and I didn't manage and then like three weeks before the show I was like okay um do you want to join us do you want to be a horse and then uh, yeah, then she joined and this helped us to bring the counterbalance, I hope. <laughs> the horse, it's a, it's a good um, keyword because it's such a special ah. character in the, in the piece. And um, I would like to maybe give this question also to the people watching now. Um, just to to ask to open up the space, like what the what was the horse for you? What did you see, or how did you see the horse? They, this would be something I'd be interested to hear, and maybe also for you, Alitza. It's nice to hear what what the horse, how the horse was seen. Xenia is saying hi from the train. That's the performer. Hi, Xenia. <laughs> We have something in the chat. Oh yeah, course, man. I don't know what that is. Yeah, Dominique, could you maybe extend a bit? Do you want to say something to it? Ah, oh. Okay, people are responding. Okay, we give you some time to respond, guys. Yes. <laughs> We also have another question there, but let's see if there's something more about the horse coming in. Okay. Um, let's maybe go with this question that also just came in um, from Mina. Mina, would you like to ask your question again and say it yourself? Is she here? Also your videos. Ah, okay, you're back. Okay, okay, all right. I will just, I, then I will read it and ask it straight away. Um, it was one we touched already a little bit. How did the pandemic pandemic affect your rehearsals, and how did you come up with the idea? And what was the meaning of the metal frames? So two different things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm still. I'm doing. I'm sorry. I have to do some. Uh, I wanted to do some technical stuff. Whatever. Not now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so the questions again um the how did the pandemic affect the rehearsal schedule mm -hmm. and the rehearsals and how did you come up with the okay. idea and what was the meaning of the metal frames okay well the the rehearsals were affected very much uh i mean first of all we were supposed to start in february then we did online festival uh, a part from other studios in may online everybody in different country in the world uh, trying to do some trailers and editing i had such a headache so it was really challenging <laughs> and then uh, um yeah then it all postponed for november we had the date of the premiere then one of the performers had to also like two performers had to drop out actually then evgenia came in so it was really messy uh but i also knew that i want to finish my masters and i want to do this project so it was somehow not like it was not able to stop from some point and especially after our august it was somehow clear we we're going to do it whatever i mean happens even i was also thinking like a, even a film or something like that so um yeah and the rehearsals were changing and 
like constant there were some constant troubles like i don't know yeah like lowry came from sweden and they had to wait for the test results and stuff like this so we were facing um many difficulties and about the frames mm, so first of all i i, I like that everybody finds their own meaning or like own interpretations and what i like is then listen to what people think so i would be also very happy to hear what you mina saw but like how did you understand them and then for me they create a counterpoint to the anger they create um, some architecture in space they are very peaceful but when they swing and then they open i find uh, they suddenly become so present or so like this kind of wobbliness and how they wiggle it's uh, it suddenly feel fragile so as if they could fall any moment which they also did a lot in the rehearsals and also on the show <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just a contrast and it's also framing like what you can see or how you look or if you like in how, which way do you position yourself? How do you show yourself to the audience? Yeah, there is, I like to work with multi-layered meanings. Next to the frames, there's also a lot of other objects in space and um, they also play like a, a huge role in the in the whole piece so how like the question would be what what is the role of the materials and the objects for you and how did you choose to work with them and in this specific way mm. so working with so sorry so <laughs> Um, so first of all I think that objects bring a certain necessity to move or like I'm asking myself like why should I stage movement why is movement important uh, and how like why do we dance and why should somebody look at why we dance and then objects and materials on stage give me some reason because they need if you want them to move, you need to move. So, and then suddenly there is like a whole material and whole world and imaginations appearing out of that. So they're a big inspiration for me and partner. I really love to work with objects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An amazing object is also, I really have to say that, is the, I, and I don't know what's the right word for it, but this um, tree, wrapping machine mm -hmm. that is also such a like a very surprising element of the piece and i think it opens up also a lot of different um meanings and that is something i also enjoyed a lot when seeing the piece that i never felt um in a way that there was an imposed meaning or a message you wanted to get through with a certain image that you created but by the way how the like in or in the way how the performers also interacted with the objects it could be read in many different ways um i realized and i wanted to bring um the focus maybe a little bit to that moment um when when the performers are when when Xenia and when um, Evgenia are pulled are being pulled through the through this machine, also to ask our like the pe the people who are watching now like what what you saw in that moment or what kind of images or what what kind of meanings um, were created in that moment for you. We have another message in the chat. I'm also checking what um, our costume and stage designer Claudia wrote me. She wrote me uh, an email. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I have to see. We have a multi multi channel conversation yeah. going on here, I think. 
Oh, she's she's replying about the frames and I think also about the machine. So what do you have? Tell me. <laughs> I have not. I have something about the horse mm -hmm. uh, from Sedina. She's writing that horse, the fish-eyed, floppy rubber horse head, inverted, centaur character was a delightful abstraction of dead pan humor and innocent awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Roxanne writing this horse tree machine made me think about a butchery. Yes, Roxanne. <laughs> uh, Ursu is writing in this picture, I saw so many things, a shit coming out from the S that fishes being wrapped up <laughs> to serve as food for humans. Humans being stuffed into forms and shaped Ape. apes, shapes, shapes. I guess it should be shapes, yes, and being controlled. Yeah, it's absurd. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like on a radio show. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. <laughs> Such a but i like i like it continue being so interactive it's great actually thank you guys <laughs> um mm. should i read what what claudia tell, told us in the email yeah so um first i was searching for objects that symbolize fa symbolize faces of anger something that rises under pressure and bursts after some time i was curious about this machine and what it gives to the play Oh, so she's she's answering about the machine. <laughs> we were also wanted to deal with humor and nonsense. When I found this machine, I had associations of a sausage factory or of the birth of a calf. These organic connotations between disgust and beauty created an absurd moment in the context, context of anger. To this organic and moving object, I wanted to oppose, so I think this is about the frames, I wanted to oppose something static that creates space, which either is a limit or a gate, depending on one's perspective and action. In the process, the performers examined and explored the space and turned them to be also a vivid and flexible element of the stage, which I welcomed a lot. There's nothing more fulfilling than seeing performers work with it and when all elements of the play influence each other. <laughs> intestines too, somebody's writing here. Yeah, sausages, intestines. <laughs> okay, to move away from the sausages. Um, <laughs> Uh, I want to maybe because we were just like there we now have like already different elements we have um, the performance performers we have the we have now we talked a little bit about the objects and the materials in space there is also um, a lot of text or text and voice and sounds is also a very present layer maybe you'd like to say a little bit about that and how the, where the text comes from for example yeah so um i knew i wanted to start to experiment a bit more with text but i didn't know how yet or like it, it sometimes appears in the show sometimes not and this time i wanted to challenge myself and start to work with somebody who is doing text and then i occasionally meet met henning in prague on a festival called small inventory and he's from Berlin, actually. And we started talking and we saw a show together and then we were like, this was a great show. And he was like, yeah, I would really like to do something like this. And I was like, want to join us? <laughs> so, and then Henning joined and he wrote this uh, beautiful text, like in the beginning and in the middle. I mean, there are also some texts from the performance. So this is, it's, it's like a mix. And this is what I was imagining, like to have like, to have texts from the ensemble, from the from somebody from outside, so that it can merge together and go. So, yeah, this is yeah. I I don't know. I think Henning is not here, but I know that Matos is here, and maybe he could tell us something about um, the pro, like the work with the text afterwards and about the music, because I have seen him in the chat. Yes. 
Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. I, I mean, the, the way it was uh, rendered by the actress, particularly by Caroline, was very melodic, as you heard, and expressive. So largely, this was only going with that um, musicality, so to say, in her uh, performance of the text. And adding to it this of yeah, transcribing it in a sense to a synthesizer as a kind of shadow or um, augmentation that grows from that voice, but is still tied with that voice. It's kind of in, inside that voice. So there are two, and, and also it was not so much. For me, a big part of it was also rendering these texts and these synthesizers in space, setting some type of a relationship with the third speaker in the middle, in the back. A little bit here, maybe in the sound now. But maybe yeah, sometimes like the shadow is coming only from the back, but the voice from the front, or these two different voices, one from the back, one from front. So uh, it, it creates these layers or plastic relations between them. Thank you very much for explaining a little bit um, on that. I also remember you were saying that you took some um, parts of text from um, Karen's, right? Like, <laughs> I remember it and I didn't know what it was and I found it quite like a curious thing. So maybe you could just shortly say what, um, what that is and um, share that. Yes. Um, mm, yeah, actually, my boyfriend told me about Karen's and it's, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if I will get the definition right now, <laughs> very precise, but it's uh, mostly like white, frustrated, middle-aged woman who go um, have out, out, outrageous moments in public. So that's, there was, was like a woman in Walmart screaming at people, you can lock me up in a prison um, and like, fuck off, you are all motherfuckers and all these like, so this was like inspiration for Caroline to pick up these kind of texts. So um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a part of anger and frustration and yeah, female hysteria kind of like, yeah. Like how how women nowadays deal with um, their frustrations. Um, because you now mentioned it yourself, like the how women deal with frustrations. Was there um, an intention from your side also to touch this theme of of um, female and male um, roles? Was that something? Um, also part of the process or the topic because it's not clear like it's not so like it's not directly anger but in a way also um it, it it's something that comes and this thinking about the roles and how like anger is embodied um like was there like how did you deal with it in the process and was there how was it part of the process yeah i mean some of the cursing is male some of it is somehow female there is this objects which somebody said to look like dicks also um yeah and then also the performers are not male so it's uh yeah it's something which is present because of the the choice of the performers but also yeah i mean the variety I don't know, <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, turning myself in it. Hmm. Part of the topic was also hysteria and, and that's, that's what happened to me that I somehow tangled myself in it because it's so complicated. <laughs> so I, I decided to somehow skip this uh, gender role classifications and like this um, 
how we see or how because i mean i could claim it a political piece in the way of this like let's empower women and we are uh, suppressed by men and i don't feel like there is the need to polarize so much so that's why i uh, didn't want to go so much into this but it's of course present in itself and but i don't need i don't think it needs like a further comment on it but i gave it a thought no. yeah and just just to um say from uh, like a viewer's point of perspective when i saw it it uh, was for me actually a very present thing as well because it is the, the it is performed by three women and they're all like embodying really strong the strong expressions of anger which is not maybe so common to see and still like uh, somehow there's a, a connotation to think of it made me think about this a lot and um um but also there i find it great that it is like a meaning that that you can read if you want to but on the other hand it also like is possible to read it in a different way and see other things <laughs> and this openness is really uh, like a great great thing in in this piece that i enjoyed a lot when seeing it um do we still have other questions from our people watching listening now then it's now the moment where you can write something into the chat if there's something you feel like we didn't touch that you are super curious about that you want to know about alitza or the performers or sound lights any other element i will need to like in my computer in between. Uh, mm -hmm. We just give everybody a short moment to think. Or any comment or something, some feedback or something you would like to say, to express. Okay, we just we have we have a comment. Maybe I can just read it out loud to mm -hmm. um, share it. It was difficult to watch in context in context to a constant exposure to what's happening globally, political, e ecological, cultural violence, etc. It only became palatable for me seeing a mirrored elements of whimsy and angst. The possibility to have multiple perspectives allowed me to laugh and cringe. <laughs> and then Anna is saying I enjoyed the music and the sounds and then we also have a question of Irina why do you call it a piece for three dancers while there is four of them the horse is not included uh, yes I saw this typo today <laughs> Um, I started to change it already in some texts which are published, but I didn't manage to change it in all of them. So it is for four. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Irina. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mina is asking, um, seid ihr von der UDK Berlin? Are you from the UDK? Yes, so the, yeah, so HCT is, um, do you want to explain, Hannah, or should I explain? <laughs> Okay, I'll do it. So uh, HZT is an umbrella which is covering the programs of dance that um, appeared in the East and West Berlin. And this is an initiative to merge the East and West Berlin together because it's so long after they reunited. And there are two programs from UDK, which is the Solo Dance Authorship Master. And then there is a Bachelor of Dance and Context and Choreography. That's the UDK part. And then there is the Université der Kunst. And then there is a Hochschule für Schauspielkunst, Ernst Busch. And that's the one that we are subscribed in. And there is the Master of Choreography. So we are from the MA Choreography from HFS, uh, Schauspielkunst, Ernst Busch. 
complicated. It's, it's, it took me half a year to understand after the beginning of the studies. Like, how does this work and what is UFO Studios? <laughs> Yeah, and also, I mean, now uh, Mina is writing, yeah, a little ash. <laughs> yeah, and also UFO Studios is not only HCT, but it's also UFO Studios itself. And then there is like many small companies like other studios and, oh my God, uh, yeah, Hyde's House now. There is also like many other stuff in UFO Studios, but then that's even more complicated. Cool. Okay. Alitza, do you feel like still adding something or should we slowly wrap it up here? If, ooh, oh. no. Melika. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read what you wrote. Um, yes. The horse. I was seeing it at some, as someone who in a way built up the scene and then it was standing aside just observing, but at some point got involved in what it has brought, maybe. I find it super nice what was happening with the stage, the frame, the light. Also, at some point, there was light on the frames reflecting, which was nice to see. I actually saw a bit of femin femininity because of text, but also recognized the things arising from male. Mm. Yeah, I... I like what you're saying about the horse. I mean, I was also having this idea that the horse is actually like the protector of the space or observer, but I also didn't know, I mean, I didn't manage to name it so properly, but, and then I just find this questioning interesting for myself and for audience members that like, who is this actually? And like, if it, if it is the, the creature or the character that builds up the space, then why does it get killed and what are we doing to ourselves if we are killing something which gave us something like if um, we would see the horse as a like mystical creature or some kind of animalistic uh, side of ourselves then why are we killing this inside like our insides yeah it's kind of sad <laughs> but this is what i was thinking of and i hoped it can go yeah, it can get through. Oh, my, my parents were gratulating uh, us in uh, overweight. They said, congrats, Alitska. For us, one of the most understandable Alitza's productions. Mother, <laughs> mother and father. <laughs> one of the most understandable. <laughs> <laughs> there is a... Um, yes. Okay, we have a question in between Melika's comments. She was just saying also, I'm going to read hers first. I also agree with the butchery and the sausage and so on so weiter and was a bit neutral but could not resist in the mood. I see, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Melika, for all the reflection. We also have a question now still from Susanne. Susanne, do you feel like uh, asking it yourself? I couldn't hear you yet. It was, it was interesting to me because I saw the premiere on Friday and now um, the video version you did for the streaming. And I would like to know how, what, it, what changed for you by making this uh, video version and in which way it became a different piece for you or not perhaps yeah. okay so hmm. it was quite fast process of editing so i was mostly figuring like focusing on like how to still keep the message or the most important parts to be part of the video so this was the most challenging i think i didn't have time yet to reflect like what is the difference or like how they are different but what i could say is like that i had some troubles like if i didn't put headphones on i couldn't go in the uh in the movement and in the music so well uh, so if the sound if you didn't put your sound on i think it like it sound like really massively with the bass and everything then it's it's a very much different experience but if you are able to watch it on a good screen and with good good uh, sound i think it's uh, comparable 
yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you see definitely more details on the video because also in the theater you need to have like six meters distance from the performance, which is not usual. And I am also not so much a fan of, like, I don't want to watch opera from the second balcony, you know, because I love to see faces. And also the face masks bring like a difficulty with that. So there is like positives and negatives to both, I think. And I'm happy that uh, it was we were able to make such a good uh, documentation that people can watch it. And I hope you could follow and that you didn't get bored too much because that's what happens with video recordings a lot. So this was my biggest goal for the video. We also have a, a comment in the chat ex exactly on that. Uh, again, from Ursu, I found it amazing how the intensity of the performance got transmitted through the video. I was really engaged while watching. In the beginning, I found it more funny and the second half really touched my guts. Yes, Ursu, thanks a lot. <laughs> You're very positive, guys, thanks. Um, -da 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 -da. And then... <laughs> Sedina also had another question. question. Uh, do you feel like asking it yourself again? Then just unmute yourself. Hi, how's the audio? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, so um, as I was watching, I was very curious how much of it is improvised, how much um, uh, can the integrity of the performance uh, be trusted to the dancers to improvise? So I, mm, I think it's also good to, if Lauri could uh, answer in after me, maybe I will try to sum up briefly. I mean, we improvise a lot while creating and then with time, I am really happy if it can get more and more fixed and ideally totally fixed but it's not possible with some scenes, especially because of the material. Um, yeah, and then there, yeah, I think this is what I would say to that. So, I mean, they are allowed, I mean, of course, and they are allowed to improvise if the sausage doesn't go well enough into the machine and it falls out. <laughs> you're bound to do deal with the situation that happened to you. So, and this is what happened like in the showings because we had regular showings to professors or mentors and there was every time happening some new bullshit so they had to deal with it and so i also trusted them that they will manage to solve it Lauri, do you want to add something to it uh yeah i mean like uh most of the the stuff all the choreography inside we sort of devised we were improvising on like based on tasks uh, from Alitza, but then definitely just uh, the nature of the objects with that are, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of air and like gravity <laughs> mixed with using these things, and and it's always a bit different depending on so many different different factors. So then, um, yeah, there was always a line of how you're supposed to supposed to um, work with the object, but then you always have to improvise a tiny bit of it because there's always surprises. Yeah, I mean, especially the rhythm is something which is somehow fluid, but also fixed. Like, there is like, you jump on the mattress this many times and then you stand up and then you jump on it. So it's somehow then, then you also know where, like what you can expect from each other. So. Yeah, and like besides those small, small um, adjustments that you had to do with the, with the objects and everything, then most of the, the movement in the performance, I think, is, is more or less fixed, fixed in that sense. So that there was more room for, for improvising with the objects when that, that time came, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Katarina wrote another question into the chat. Now we're getting a lot of questions. This is great. I'm enjoying <laughs> this a lot. Um, and um, I want to ask you, do you feel like asking your question yourself? Then you can just unmute your microphone and um, speak up. Hello, hello, can we- Hello, hello, can you hear me? 
Hello, Katarina. Hello. I uh, wanted to ask you, my, my question is that I saw the work in progress in Prague and uh, it was um, quite different compared to this and I was looking forward how it will change in time. And yeah, if, if you can tell us a little bit about the process of, of modifying it and about how, because it has a lot of, um, a lot of uh, different material and scenes back then and how yeah and also the process of saying hi to some to some material thank you thank you um yeah it was we had like 70 scenes in prague i think and <laughs> <laughs> And then we came back and then I had to cut like half of it. But because of Caroline wasn't there with generating the material the first three days, I wanted to still generate material. So we had like another 50, I don't know, like then we had like another 70 scenes altogether. And then I had to cut again, like 35. And then <laughs> I was still having like 30 scenes or 26, something like that. I remember like writing a list of it and then... I was having consultations and the mentors were like, it's just scenes, <laughs> it doesn't work. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was a very hard process of saying goodbye and I was really frustrated that it doesn't work. Um, which is then, I mean, part of the process, I guess. And we were changing a lot and throwing away and yeah, trying to make it work. And this was, uh, yeah, like the two months before the premiere, this is what was happening. And I was changing constantly everything. Yeah, I mean, it was a different piece every time that we saw each other. Uh, I was like, yeah, we could like, I would like to change this and I would like to change this. And yeah, then I think like one week before the premiere, Lowry said like, please don't change anything anymore. <laughs> then I still did. I mean, one week before <laughs> premiere, <laughs> one week before premiere, I think I threw away the biggest stage design that we had prepared the one that is on the posters <laughs> the the red curtain because it was not working so it was painful but i mean it was better without it and yeah and then it was what was what was very joyful is then that some at some moments like the scenes were coming back the one that i took away then then came back and then it started to merge together and feel like a journey and be more coherent and consistent and that's what I was aiming for or like we all were trying to get there I think also the performers so yeah so it was like big uh, challenge of like the scenes versus journey and how to make it merge okay it's been more or less an hour now <laughs> that we're into this Maybe let's give just a, uh, another moment to see if there's still a question coming in, if there's still somebody who wants to know something or add something. Yeah, I would call it like, give us last question, guys, and then we, last then we call it the evening. <laughs> hmm. Well, in the meantime, while we're waiting, I can already, I mean, I already want to say like, uh, thank you and congratulations to you, Alitza also, and the whole team, whole, your whole team, and especially for being so brave to making a premiere and all of this um, during a lockdown, lockdown time, which is really not easy. And it's always easy to say, okay, let's postpone it and let's do it later, but that you still manage to make it work with everything so successfully, really like, hood up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you. <laughs> it was a challenging one. I think there's no more questions incoming. Good, then, oh yeah, Sedina is clapping, I can see. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to thank you, thank everybody who came to see uh, the show. Also, Nick Hafner is clapping. Let's <laughs> go <laughs> to all of you, but um, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks so much to the team again. I would like to thank the partners, like the HCT, the Festival Zero Point in Prague, 
and the Deutsche Bühnenverein and Deutschland Stipendium. That's the guys who made this possible and also namely the team, I mean the performers, sound design, like the sound, the composer, <laughs> stage designer, light designer, text, oh my god, production, assistant of choreography. <laughs> 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 no, and I mean, the people who edited the film, and I mean, they were able to do it in one week, is like uh, Alicia and like people who came to to shoot it, holotropic films. Yeah, it was a big, big experience. And the mentors, oh my God, yes, it was, uh, yeah, I'm really happy it was able, we were able to do this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming here. Thank you for bringing on in all your great questions and comments and feedback. It was a very fun experience to have this talk with you all. I have a suggestion uh, for this last moment. Perhaps we can all unmute our microphones and give you a real sound to say goodbye. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thanks to my parents as well. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Soon. Thank you. Tschüss. Bye, guys. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Alisa. Thank you. Wunderschönen Abend. Tschüss. People are leaving room. Um mich nicht zu gehen. Let's <laughs> <laughs> bleiben. <laughs>